volume. Uh, so, so far we've been doing surface area, right? Which is all the surfaces, like all six surfaces of a box, for example, all those areas added together. Um, a, a surface area measurement, how many dimensions are we measuring if we're measuring an area? Uh, two. two dimensions. You guys know what two dimensions uh, means? You can get anywhere in two dimensions by going left, right, up, and down. Okay, that's why the smart board is two dimensional. Any flat surface is two dimensional. When you're measuring area, you're measuring two dimensions. Like how many boxes cover this surface? And on surface area, you do all the side. Even though the the shape is three dimensional, the surfaces are still two dimensional. Anyway, that's what we've been doing so far. But what if you don't, so uh, surface area for this room would be like, how much paint do we need for the walls and, or stuff on the ceiling and floor? That would be surface area for the room. But what if we want to know how much can fit inside the room? Like how many boxes can I volume. store in here? That's a volume question. Three dimensional. So. That is three dimensional. So I used to, you guys remember back in the middle school, I used to have this colorful box. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they got destroyed. Um, and that student is no longer with us, coincidentally. Wait, Wait someone destroyed that? Who was it? Brittany. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, he says his name. Brittany. <laughs> uh, anyways. Um, it was, you know, it was colorful. It just looked like a box. It was a cubic foot. I don't think I have a good cube in here. Probably not. It was it was a cubic foot, about a big. It, it, it looked like a cube. Uh, that's the kind of thing that you use to measure a volume. No, it's not a cube. So if I wanted to say how much this room could hold, it would be you could measure it with cubes. How many boxes can I fit in here that are perfect cubes? So if I drew a picture, it might look kind of like this on my little picture. Like how many cubes can I fit inside this? That's how you measure volume. We measure area with little squares, right? How many squares can I fit? But we measure volume, three dimensions, with a cube. All right, so let's pretend this is like an office building and I had some cubes. Yeah, I'm not gonna draw them all. It'll take me forever, it would look ugly anyway. Let's say I had like, uh, seven cubes long and eight cubes deep. Seven so how many cubes would be on my ground floor of this building? Uh, 56. 56, seven times eight, right? Seven rows or seven columns of eight or eight rows of seven. Anyway, I'm not gonna, it's hard to draw, but there would be 56 on the bottom. But let's say this building was, I don't know, 12 stories tall. Then how many boxes would be in the total building? Uh, 56 times 12. So all I did was 7 times 8 to get the bottom, the base. And that times 12. Okay, you said 672. And let's pretend this were, these were cubic meters. I kind of said the answer. So when you're dealing with the three-dimensional measurement, a volume, you, instead of labeling it as m squared like we've been doing with the areas, it's m cubed. It means a cubic meter, which would be a big, you know, a meter. That would be a very big, large box. It would take up a lot of space. This is a meter, right? Yardstick, but it's also a meter. Um, actually, a meter is about that big. So a cubic meter would be that long, that wide, that tall, it was up like that. Anyway. Six seventy two is the volume. That's how many boxes could fit inside of this thing. Okay. So here's the general formula for volume. If you're doing a cylinder or a prism like we were doing above. Um, 
Anything with the bases on top and bottom that are the same, listen. Anything with the two bases identical, a prism or a cylinder, uh, you basically you just find how big is the bottom, how much can fit on the bottom, the base area, and then you do that times the height, just like we did with our little office building here. How many fit on the bottom? Seven times eight, then times I. But what if it's your base is a circle? Then what would we do for the base area? No. How do you do area of a circle? Pi r squared, right? And then whatever that is times the height. Or if it's a triangle, you do little base times little height divided by two, right, for triangles. And then whatever that is times the height. Okay, here's something kind of confusing. I kind of switch those around. When it says little h, it's talking about the height of the base. When it's big H, it's height of the entire prism. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Little h, the little base, and then big H. Is, and same, same thing with the little b. The little b means the little base of the triangle. If I said big B, that would be the area of like the entire base. Okay, so that's kind of confusing, but little b means something different than big B. Little h means something different than big H. So the very, very generic and not very useful formula for volume is area of the base times the height. Depending on what the base is, is it a triangle, is it a circle, is it a square, you have to do different things. But whatever that base is, you do that times height. Okay, on some problems they'll just give you like a wacky shape on top and bottom, like these are identical, and then they'll just tell you the base area is whatever, 60 square meters. And then they'll just tell you that the height is um, like whatever, 18 or whatever, okay. And then you just do the base area times height. In that case, it's super easy. Base area times height. All right, let's get going. Number one. Okay, state a specific formula. So we're not gonna write the generic base times height formula for these. We're gonna be as specific as we can be. How can we find the volume of a perfect cube? Well, almost, yes. But what's special about a cube? Side cube. Oh, right, so. All sides are the exact same length. So length? Square times height. Okay, not just these two are not just the same. All three of these are the same. So length of cube? So, or just side, side cube? Side cube. I, I think the book wrote E cubed. What do you think E cubed means? Edge. Edge cubed. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You can use S cubed or whatever. Okay. Okay, B, how can we find, I mentioned this one earlier, how can we find the area, sorry, the volume of a cylinder? Pi r squared times height. So, pi r squared times big H height. Okay, C says a square prism. A square prism is kind of what I drew at the beginning. It means the bases have to be squares. So they can be really tall, but um, the base has to be a perfect square. So these two would have to be the same, but this one would be, could be different. So what would their volume for this be? How do you find the area of the space right here? Oh, S squared times height. So for that one, we'll call it S squared times height. C, a triangular prism. Okay. Um, Times H divided by two times 
how do we find the area of a triangle? Uh, base it, times height divided by, by two. Yeah, that's a little B and H. Um, so then just multiply that answer by height. All right, all that times, you don't really have to put parentheses here, but I like it. Or you could say one half base height, height, capital H. I'm going to keep it like that though. Base times height divided by two times the big height. Can you move that up there for a second? Uh, you might, yeah, you might hold on to those four formulas, might put them in a good, useful place so that you can reference them later if you need it. But basically, generally, you just need the area of the base times the height of the prism. Whatever the base is. Okay, I'll just erase this and then we'll start at number three. Okay, number three, we're finding the volume. So... On three, um, it's a square prism, or you could call it a rectangular prism. You could think of the bottom side as being the base, that long side on the bottom, or you could think of those squares on front and back as being the base. Let's think of the squares as the base. So what's the area of that square base in front? On number three, what's the area of the square base in front? No? Nine. Nine. Three times three. Okay. So that's the area of the base, and then we're going to take that times the height of the prism. What's the height of the prism? Nine. Now, in this case, the height is, the prism is kind of lying down, so the height is like the, how deep it is. So it's just nine times nine, which is 81 meters cubed. Yeah, volume is actually, even though it's three-dimensional, it's actually easier than surface area. That's why we're doing more than 14 problems today. Is I said it would be a little bit easier, didn't I? Okay, number five. What kind of shape is number five? Triangular, what? Prism. Okay, how do I find the area of that triangular base? Base times height divided by two. What are the base and the height? Nine and two. Nine and two. You gotta look at the bottom to find the nine, and then you look at the top triangle to see the two. So what's nine times two divided by two? Nine. nine. Okay, that's the area of the base. I'm going to do that times the height of the prism. What's the height of the prism? 24. 180 plus 36, 216. 216 feet cubed. Or you could say cubic feet. Another way that you can measure volume, this is probably more common, is like gallons or liters of liquid measurement. Those, those are also volume measurements. But we're not doing that today. Number seven. Okay, this seven is probably the hardest one because it's got the, it's another triangular prism. But what's weird about seven? Doesn't give you the height. <coughs> But, no, it just gives you the eights on the side. So, how do I find the height? Yeah. That's ugly. Um, you can cut down the middle, and then you get a 30, 30, 60, 90. Right. So You're going to use that trick we used at the beginning class. It makes a 30, 60, 90. So, this is 4. 4, four, four squared. Three. 4 squared and 3. Okay, how do I find the area of the triangle? Uh, base times height. Base height, so I like it. Okay, so the base is eight. Eight times height divided by two. Uh, 32 divided by two is 16, so 16 squared three. 
you can, if you want to on these, turn all the answers into decimals, but if I get a pi or a square root, that doesn't simplify, I'm just going to leave it alone. Just one less thing to plug in the calculator. So what do I do with that? Um, multiply it by 26. Times the height of the prism, which is 26. So if I was doing this on the calculator, I'd just do 16 times 26 and then put the square root of 3 on that answer. What is 16 times 26? 416. Okay, so uh, it's centimeters. Um, if you want to plug that in and get the decimal answer, that's fine. If you do that, you might let me know tomorrow so that I can make sure I read both the answers, not just the one answer. Okay, number nine. All right, uh, what's the shape of the base on number nine called? Count the sides. Somebody already counted it. Octagon is correct. It's got eight. Um, how do we find the area of a regular polygon, like an octagon? Uh, side divided times uh, One half opossum perimeter. Or also you can do opossum perimeter divided by two. Uh, so what's the opossum on number nine? 18.1. What's the perimeter? Is it 120? Oh, wait. I did not talk about it. Yeah, 120. Yeah. Uh, 15 times 8. Yeah. yeah. So 18.1 times 120 divided by 2. Will give us the area of the base. Uh, One thousand eighty-six. Yeah. I guess there would be no decimals. Wait, is there not a decimal? Okay. Um, then what do I need? That's the area of the base. Then what do I need to do to find the volume? Times height. So times thirty-four. Meters. Um, what exactly would we do on ten? What shape is ten a trapezoid? So, the height of the trapezoid, the little h, is six. Do you see that in the bottom? You remember how to do the area of a trapezoid? Um, you add the two bases together, divide by two times height. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's how you find the area of the trapezoid number ten. Okay, number eleven, a cylinder. So how do we find the area of the base of a cylinder? What is the base of a cylinder? Circle. How do we find the area of a circle? Pi r squared. What's the r? What's the radius on number 11? 8. So 8 squared is 64 times pi. You can plug pi in if you want to, but it's probably easier to leave it alone. Okay, then what? I, that's the area of the circular base. Then what do I do with that? Times the height of the cylinder. Which was what? 6. So, 384 pi feet cubed. I said cubed and I wrote the word. Okay, number 13, same thing. It's a, uh, it's a cylinder again. So, on 13, 
It looks like the 24 is for the entire diameter because they're kind of pointing towards the middle of it. So if the diameter is 24, what's the radius? 12, 12 half of it. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do 12 squared times pi. You guys remember what 12 times 12 is? So we got 144 pi for the base. We're going to take that times the height of the cylinder, which was 16. Say again. Two thousand three hundred four centimeters. Again. Two thousand three hundred four centimeters feet. Hi. Hi. We're getting old of age and hard of hearing. I see. Hard today. It is hard. Yeah. Volumes are three-dimensional measurements, and then uh, the three kind of represents that. Everything we've done before this was areas. Those are two-dimensional measurements, like flat surfaces. Okay, number 15. All today should be uh, volumes, so they should all be cubed. Uh, find the volume of a rectangular prism with a base area of 26 square feet and a height of 16 feet. How are we going to find the area of that rectangular prism? Base times height. Okay, basically they're telling us we already found the area of the base for you is 26. The height is 16, so just multiply the area of the base times height. 26 times 16 is 416. Yeah, the feet. Yes. Um, which problem up above is like number 15? Four. Number four. You guys see number four? It's got a weird, irregular base, so they just told you what the area was for the base. So you just need to do base times height on four. It's an easy one. All right. Um, on, on six. It has a rhomb, rhombus in it. Rhombi. Diagonal times diagonal divided by two. Number 17. How many cubic foot boxes? Okay. So if they're asking how many cubic boxes fit in a room, they're asking the volume. If they're asking for how many cubic feet or meters, that's a volume question. So it's just a different way of saying what's the volume. How many cubic foot boxes would fit in a 15 feet by 10 feet bedroom? That is eight feet high. So we're like finding the volume of your somebody's bed here. Times eight. So they're saying on the, the floor of the bedroom is was it fifteen and eight? Fifteen and ten? So if they say fifteen by ten, that it's a rectangle. Obviously most rooms are rectangles, right? So the area of the base is fifteen times ten. 150. The height of your bedroom, of the bedroom, is 8 feet. That's probably about, about right. 150 times 8 is huh? 1200. 15 times W times 10. Okay. One more. Of course, we got to go out with a bang here. Yeah, 19 is coming out here. See if I can do a decent drawing on this one. And I think they, which I think they went from this side at this point. Actually, let me change colors. They went from here to here with one diagonal. So does that mean we're going to put that back in here? They went from here to here also. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Eight, five, three. Okay, so those numbers, that the eight and the five, are the diagonals that they drew in there. I'll go back to red and finish this. There. Can you see it? 
What do these diagonals create with this edge right here? Right triangle. Right triangle. You guys see it right there? Uh, also, I didn't draw it very well, but what is the five diagonal? Yeah. Screw it up. I just need to be a little bit easier here. Okay. What does the five diagonal create with uh, these two edges? Um, it's right. Another right triangle. Kind of hard to draw, but the picture is not perfect. Um, it looks better in the in your book, but that's that's another right triangle right there because that's a rectangle on the bottom. Anyways, there's two things that we're missing. You guys see what we're missing? The width and the height. Right, we're missing the width of the base, like right there, and we're also missing the height of the prism. Okay, so yeah, let's let's start with the height. Let's start with the height. Okay, how would I set this up to find H? Do you let me know. What? How do I solve for H here? Uh. Side times side. No, that's area. Okay, well. Um, five squared plus x squared equals eight squared. Five squared is twenty-five. Eight squared is sixty-four. Okay, hold on. Five. five squared plus h squared equals eight squared. We've probably done that a hundred times this year. The two legs squared add up to the hypotenuse squared, right? You guys see the right triangle? Anyway, this is our formula. So, if h squared is 39, h is squared of 39. Six point two four four. No, I'm really going like that. Okay. So I'm going to put that over here. H is the square root of 39. We'll leave that for later. Okay, how am I going to find the width of the base right here? Right, Pythagorean theorem, how would it set up? Does anybody remember this back from previous three blank five? Oh, a little bit. Remember three, four, five was the right triangle? I guess not. Yeah. Apparently not. Okay, anyway, this will come out as four, so let's get back into this. Yeah, 25 minus 9 is 16. Square root of 16 is 4. So then to find the okay. volume of that. Yeah, how do I find, how do I find the area of this base? 3, three times 4, four 12. Times 12 times square root of 39 is? A big decimal. 12 square root of 39. You can put the decimal if you want to. And we are, it's feet again, so feet cubed. What is your rate What was like, was it just W squared? Um, yeah, it's how I found the W, which is the same way we found that H from earlier. Looked like this. So it was just half, like, just below it was W. Yeah, that wasn't crazy. Can 20 be loaded? How did I get what? Oh, 3 times 4 is 12. That's the base. It's a rectangular base, 3 and 4. This is your question. Yeah. What? No, 20 is normal. Uh, but I told the other class that 32 could be bonus. So if you want to try 32, 32 is not too bad. I'm never going to assign an odd or bonus. I don't think you should have, you should mul multiply square roots, you can do that, it shouldn't be any square roots. Um, what should be that? Yeah. Yeah.
Get your book out, try number two. 
How did you not notice your book? Oh, Yes. I don't have to. Oh, I forgot to hit.